What's up guys and gals, my name is Splattercat and we're here today playing another episode of Dawn of War 2 Vanilla. Now we had come to the planet Typhon Primaris and we had been looking around trying to figure out what the hell the Eldar were up to on this planet as they do seem to be stirring up the orcs quite a bit as they are known to do in previous entries. Actually I think in Dawn of War 1 it was chaos that was stirring up the orcs, that's what it was. Anyways, we've got one mission left here on day number seven for Typhon Primaris, and it is one of our lovely defense missions. So let's do a little bit of the old equipping, and then we'll ship on out and see if we can annihilate ourselves some orcs. First up is Cyrus, who has leveled up to level four, it looks like. He got Hidden Knowledge, which was a new uh, grouping of armor, it looks like. I actually said it was almost a new weapon. New armor, though, and it looks like it gave him like a little shiny gold skull on his shoulder. That's pretty cool. I can dig that. Everybody needs a shiny gold skull on their shoulder. It, it breeds respect, I think. Let's give him one more point because we wanted to move him towards sniper rifles. Now, he can't use the only sniper rifle we have on deck right now, Death Touch of the Angel. Luckily, he will level up shortly, and then we'll be able to give that to him. The High Impact Shot, I think is what it's called, or High Powered Shot, is one of the better abilities in the game, allowing you to pretty much annihilate anybody. It also eliminates the need to throw these pesky bombs on buildings. We can actually just snipe people out of the windows, which is pretty cool. It makes him really good during boss battles as well, from what I remember. I think the sniper shot actually does a huge grip of health if you can land it on the enemy. With one point left, I think I'll put it into energy so that we can continue moving forward with our plans here to get him to advanced infiltrate so that they can use accessories while infiltrated, and they can also res people while infiltrated, which is pretty bitchin'. Once we get up to maybe here, we'll start pumping the remainder of his points into ranged. Maybe put a little bit into melee or health, just in case. Oh, actually, never mind. Let's undo that. Let's put one there, and then let's focus on getting him up to improved infiltration. That's going to allow him to move at full speed while stealthed, and that's a pretty cool ability that I do want to have on the docket. Everybody else, I don't think there's going to be any equipment for us to throw around. Let's recycle some of these bolters. There we go. I'm going to do my best. Oh, actually, it levels everybody up with it. That's good. Maybe we will take some of this other worthless equipment then and just kind of throw that to the library. See if the librarium, I apologize for my misnomer there. Got the pistol of ball. We might consider giving that to Thaddeus. Just so in the future he isn't using a generic weapon if they force us to double deploy or they pull a Final Fantasy VI on us and make us split our party at some point. That could lead to heartache, I think. Other than that, though, now that we've got Leomond leveled up, Let's give him a few more points. He can get unshakable. Yeah, let's get him immune to knockdown if we can, or at least as close to immune to knockdown as possible. We'll equip him with Tartarus, which gives him a melee damage resistance and makes him deal extra damage to orcs. That'll be pretty sweet down the line. Although I think orcs are probably going to phase out in the future. Let's donate that. Anything else? He's got the Armor of Purgation, which increases all damage taken by nearby orcs each time he kills somebody and gives him a flat 15% damage resistance or we can give him the Curus of Azariah which is going to increase his melee skill by two increase his running speed a little bit and also increase his melee damage by a percentage I think I'll go with that his melee damage is getting high enough to where it'll benefit from a percentage cut it looks like that actually decks him out in some pretty silver or platinum I'm gonna assume it's platinum platinum's more gangster we'll call it platinum and he's also got two platinum knee pads, which I suppose would probably be better than gold. I think platinum's harder than gold. Let's see what we can do with this mantle of the Great Father. Maybe give it to somebody else. Let's see here. What does Tarkus have running? Not usable by the... Oh, it's only usable by the Force Commander. So we'll just actually donate that to the Librarium for now. You can see that gave us a pretty big jump in XP. If we had one other thing we could donate, we'd be in a really good spot. Let's see, Neophytic Pride, nah, that's not so good. I don't see anything else that I really want to donate. As far as deployment goes, God, I would love to get some of my other squads leveled up. I'm not really liking their equipment loadouts right now. Let's give him the armor rating. Yeah, we might as well give him the sigil or the prayer so that at the bare minimum, he takes less damage if he ends up getting cut off. He doesn't have any commander items available just yet, so I think what we'll do is we'll step to the side and let's deploy for our defense mission here. This might be a short one. Commander, the Greenskins continue to attack vulnerable targets. A communications array has come under attack from an orc horde. They seek to loot and destroy this important structure. These arrays improve our communications across the subsector and allow us to monitor enemy movements. We cannot afford to lose that advantage. Okay, 
Well, we're going to get a sniper rifle out of the deal, and it is like a lame white sniper rifle, so we'll probably just donate that to the librarium as we go through, and that'll give us a bit more XP to play with. But we do need to hold this. I really don't want to lose a communications array. We've already got our tarantula turrets equipped, and we've already got a couple artillery strikes, so let's deploy for this thing. These missions tend to function, they tend to function a little bit like a wave defense, and I think with Dawn of War 2, the developers did a good job at diversifying the missions. They don't all feel the same. The orc assault is about to begin, Commander. The greenskins will target the generators powering the array. If those fall, the relay will be theirs. Alright, well we can extend out. I don't really remember, I think it tells us at some point how we get assaulted. But for now, let me just get everybody into some kind of defensive position. And then we'll deal with it as... Oh, there it is. It gives us an arrow. That's what it was. Well, let's get everybody into cover that we can. I don't see anything coming from that direction. And we should be pretty much set up here to deal with the orc threat. Now, from what I remember... What is this? I don't like that setup. Let's put them in a building and just hope that they don't get grenaded. Don't want to put the force commander too far out. Oh, we get mines, too. That's pretty cool. Alright, well, I'll consider deploying some mines fairly shortly. I don't really know what I want to do with the mines just yet. We do get a freebie tarantula, though. Is there any type of limit on where I can deploy it? I guess not. Let's put it there, then. And there's our first tarantula turret. This bad boy will rotate around, cause all kinds of mayhem for the enemy. Oh, and there's a grenade out. Get away from that. Force Commander's getting himself into a little bit of trouble here, so let's have him run off into the distance using his special ability. And draw the rest of the enemy into the fire here, because why not? Once he regenerates a tad, we'll get back into the melee. And they should just get butchered right here in this position. Looks like he's going to try and grenade out Tarkus. Not a bad strategy. It's probably what I would have tried to do, kind of eliminate that cover if I could. That might have been a bad deployment. Might have been a poor choice on my part. Let's throw a grenade out here. They're pretty clustered up. Very nice. That was almost a perfect grenade. I couldn't have asked for anything better. We'll take the Oath of Loyalty here. And a plasma gun. Cool. From what I remember, the plasma gun is a semi-automatic fire weapon, but it does a ton of damage. Where's our next attack coming from? We could spread out and grab these CPs, but I just don't care enough getting hit from this direction. I think this is a good time to deploy some of those mines. Let's get them out of the building and into that one. We'll get our tactical squads deployed there and our scouts there. Oh, it only deploys a couple mines. Alright, well, that's a little bit weird. Maybe I'll put one right there. We'll put one, like, right over here, maybe. It's a little late now. Hopefully people... Hey, what are you guys doing? Get up in there. There we go. Oh, we're getting hit from that direction, too. Funsies. All right, well, I didn't realize I was getting hit from multiple fronts. Let's maybe consider putting the scouts over here, just having them handle this issue. Let's put in another tarantula right there. And I want to be very careful about grenades going outbound to this location. Have him charge really quickly. Yeah, there's a grenade right there in the center of the bridge. If only it would blow it. Every time I see a bridge get blown up in a video game, it reminds me of, I think, mission number three from Command & Conquer Red Alert, where Tanya goes in and blows up the bridge. I don't know why. I always get a flashback to that cinematic. Anything else coming that way? No. All right. Well, not a whole lot else to worry about. That engagement went remarking. That was refreshing. It was refreshing. I wish I could deploy sandbags or something to give myself better cover as we move across these locations. In the interest of keeping them from grenading my turret building right here where all of my guys are hiding, I think what I'll do is maybe just keep the force commander out there causing problems. In this direction, the scouts seem to be holding it down. Let me see if I can get them a little bit better deployed. There we go. Let me see what I can do with these other tarantulas. I don't know if it's worth it to drop another one in maybe a neutral position right here in the corner, possibly. Something of that nature. Looks like our next attack is coming from the south. Nothing from the top. Let's go ahead and have the tackies drop in. I'm going to leave the Devastators where they're at for now. 
Maybe consider dropping another tarantula like right there, I think would be nice. I don't know if that'll wipe out the building. I really hope that it won't. Up ahead, That's looking pretty good. I can accept that. They may stop and destroy this fortification here, but I think everything will be all right. Yeah, it's looking okay. Other mining positions. Maybe I'll drop a mine right there, just because they have to walk past that corner or this one in order to get at me. It'll force them to take a little bit of damage. They're already suppressed. Come on, guys. Kill them before they get up the stairs. Help me out here. They're probably just going to chew up that tarantula, but they can't hurt it that badly. Can I order the tarantula to do anything? No. All right, so the tarantula doesn't have any unique or interesting abilities for me to exploit. Let's take the force commander, get him back into the fray. He's all healed up. There's no point having him stand back. And why did you guys just shift out of cover? Sometimes the AI in this game, I just don't know what my units are thinking. I'm going to knock them over, maybe. There we go. And then we'll draw him back out. Let's destroy some of these supply crates, too. Ooh, let's get them out of the way. Maybe shift them to that cover over there. We'll loot that. And then we'll have the actual attack marines jump into that position. I think they have a little bit better range. Might be useful to have the scouts maybe deploy down there. And then the tarantulas are going to handle the rest. These defense missions don't tend to be very difficult. I think there's one or two later where the enemy deploys kind of different tanks and things of that nature that might make it difficult. All right, so more dead enemies. Just what I like to see. Dead greenskins everywhere. Unless I'm playing greenskins. And then I like to see dead anything else everywhere. Where's our next assault coming from? The south. Very nice. Maybe consider taking up a better position here. They are favoring this southern position a tad. We need a tech marine. Fix that thing up with his crazy cyber arm. Or his servo arm, is that what it's called? I always forget what it's called. I'm going to shift Avatus for now, because we're not actually getting hit from this direction. God, they are shooting from deep sometimes. There we go. Now they're in the kill zone. Let's throw a nade out. And it looks like they do have a melee unit here, which is a little unfortunate. Maybe have him charge in, knock him back just a tad. There we go. Force commander saved him from that knob that tried to run in on us. Pretty sure that was a knob. He looked a lot larger than the other ones. Ooh, and we just ate another great... Well, I may have to abandon the position. So let's fall back with the intent of running forward. We're going to fall back with the intent of falling forward in just a moment. Heal up the units. It looks like we just lost a guy in that troop from a random rocket. Let me get away from that grenade for a second. Oh, there's Luda boys. Okay, that's bad. Let's have everybody fall back to a better... Ooh, the commander's down. That was pretty sustained fire, actually. We're going to fall back for just a moment. Have them hold the position that they're holding. And maybe think about possibly... God, that is so much damage. He is just unloading, and that's in full cover, too. God, maybe an artillery strike right there. Consider just kind of batting him around a little bit. There we go. We are going to have to get down there and rescue the force commander, which is going to be tough. Let's rotate for a moment, get people rezzed. God. Well. Those hurt. And they're holding that position fairly well. I'm going to allow them to concern themselves. Oh, I don't know. Maybe get up in that building. That's probably the best idea. Let's get up in the building. We're going to send Tarkus back out. Maybe have these three... Jump into a firing position there. Luckily, they seem to be sort of squishy at the bare minimum. And as soon as they're down, we're going to get the commander up. Wow. That was some bursty damage, and I wasn't really prepared for it. I feel a little ashamed of myself. Kind of like I just peed the bit or something. But we won. As long as you win, you don't really care how well it goes across. Now, we're at that awkward point where we've got enough time to like get halfway through the next mission. So unfortunately, I'm going to feed you guys a little bit of storyline, and then I think I'm going to drop this one off. The unfortunate consequence of the missions being of unpredictable length is that I really don't know when these things are going to end.
We did kind of poorly there, unfortunately. But speed was a little bit better. I think you can actually, like, sally out and fight them to end the mission quicker. We did all right, though. I mean, I feel a little bit embarrassed about my performance in this series, but I'm not going to stress about it too much. I haven't played in, like, four or five years, so... Let's sneak on past and do some storyline. Excellent work, Commander. Losing that array would have been a devastating blow in our fight to save the Sector. Losing it to the Orcs would have been particularly painful, since their plan was to loot it for parts. That would have been a blow. No arrays of this type have been made in two millennia. That is correct, Sergeant. We no longer have the technology to make these arrays. Losing one is a blow the Imperium never fully recovers from. Your victories against the Orcs and Eldar have stabilized the situation on Typhon for the time being. Not all news is good, however. We are receiving numerous reports of local vegetation mutating and attacks by hordes of leaping alien creatures. These creatures, what do they look like? Most of the reports are from citizens, Cyrus, and their fear makes for unreliable descriptions. I need you to return to Calderas as soon as possible. Bad Zappa's orcs have gathered for another major strike against the planetary capital. Without your support, I fear Calderas will fall. Okay. Well, since this one is already so short, I guess I'll do my level ups on camera just to extend it out a tad. Let's look at Cyrus first. And he can now equip sniper rifles, so we actually just moved on up in the world. Let's equip him with a sniper rifle. And that increased his range damage pretty substantially. Let's look here. Yeah, I gave him about 10 DPS. As a bonus, he's also going to be able to use high-powered shot. And this one makes him a bit more accurate while fighting. We don't have any new armor for him, but then again, he doesn't really need it. As far as... Let's give him the accuracy boost, actually. We'll give him the accuracy boost, plus that has a bitch and lion on it. And what is cooler than lions? There's high power shot right there. I'll try and show it off in the next episode. Let's continue moving towards keeping him actually moving at full speed when he goes stealth. Once we get to there, I think that should be enough health for the remainder of the game. And we'll just focus on ranged abilities and getting some of his energy-based abilities propped up. Avatus. Let's see here. The Devastator Marines have a couple of equipment options now that they've hit level 5. First and foremost, we're going to bump up their HP and get them into Sprint. So now he can sprint from location to location and deploy a little bit quicker. Seeing as that's one of his major weaknesses is that he can't move around very quickly, we've actually just alleviated some of the pain that goes behind using Avatus. Let's look at these armors and figure out what the best is going to be for him. Now, plus accuracy is always nice. So Armor the Destroyer gives him knockback resistance and accuracy. The Armor Purgation we already talked about. Merciless Truth is going to increase his melee skill and give him more energy. And Mantle of the Cronus is going to give him a chance to regenerate health whenever he's struck. I'm going to go with Accuracy. Actually, no. The Accuracy is going to go to Tarkus. I take that back. Tarkus is way, way beefed up in terms of ranged accuracy. Maybe I'll give him... None of these are incredibly useful. In fact, I would probably be just equipping them for the bonus to his armor rating. Maybe we'll just go with the generic armor resistance with the armor of purgation. So he gets 15% armor. Yeah, he gets 15% damage mitigation. That's pretty damn good just as a passive by itself. And then every time he kills an orc, he gets more damage. It's kind of a stacking buff that lasts for 10 seconds. We aren't going to be fighting orcs anytime soon, I don't think. I actually think the game's probably going to swap over to fighting nids pretty soon. But I think I like him where he's situated. Let's take a look at Tarkus. Oh, that's not usable by him. That's actually only usable by Avatus. All right, that works out fine then. Let's give Avatus the armor of the destroyer like I wanted. Ooh, it's got a badass collar. It's got a bullet hole in the car in the collar though. It's a little terrifying. Big old ruby kind of gemstone thing in the middle. He's looking pretty badass right now. That's some pretty cool armor. I dig it. I definitely dig it. Jumping back to Tarkus, let's look at the armors that he can potentially equip. And armor of Vandia is going to be the best choice here. It's one that wasn't lit up for Avatus. It's going to give him movement, speed, accuracy, and health. That's very clearly the choice. Accuracy is really good in this game. And considering how good his range damage is already, I prefer to keep him there. Let's drop two more points in. And he's unlocked range specialist. He can use plasma guns while moving, which is going to be pretty sweet. Because now we can use kind of a SWAT team type approach to using Tarkus. He can run around. He's got himself a blinged out golden belt. Looking a bit more stylish. I think that style is always important when you're a space marine. you got to distinguish yourself. We talked about that in Space Hulk. Your bling chain is very important to the way that you use your power claws, your lightning claws. I apologize. You guys always correct me so quickly on the nomenclature for this game. 
And so I always try and be correct if I can. Now, he's still using the improved bolter, which is lame. Super lame, actually. God, that plasma gun deals so much damage. It fires a lot slower, what it says, but it actually damages just about anything, and that includes tanks and things of that nature, which we're going to be up against in the future. I like where Tarkus is at. Let's move along. Now, Lamond hasn't leveled up at all, and that does leave us with the decision of donating some of this to the Librarium in the hopes of leveling up, and I think that's a good plan. Let's think about... Let's, we're definitely going to get rid of that, because that's no good. That's just a normal white item. The Mantle of Cronus, I don't see us getting beat up too well, although the chance to get health back whenever they're struck might be an interesting choice for the Force Commander. I just don't know as of yet, actually. That might be an interesting choice for tanking. Just because getting that much health back, he's got 233 health, a 10% chance to get 20 health back, basically. Almost 10% of your health back every time he gets hit might be a cool choice. I'm going to hold on to it for now and sit on it. I'm going to get rid of the Hymn of Purgation because it's specific to Orcs. Merciless Truth is okay, but it's not that good. It's basically a little bit worse of an addition of what he's already got. I might throw it onto Thaddeus if we can. It requires level 5 though, so Thaddeus is off the mark. Let's give Thaddeus his points. The 1 into health is going to give him suppression. So now when he jumps into combat, it's going to suppress the enemy for a short time. That's pretty good. And then we'll boost up his kind of melee ability as well. Let's give him a tad of a bit of armor rating. I would like to equip him with whatever extra stuff we have on hand, just in case they decide to deploy him. And I think that's going to deplete everything we have to sell. So, my name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me in this, the next episode of our Dawn of War 2 playthrough. I hope you've been enjoying it. I know it's not the most skilled playthrough, but I am having fun, and I hope to see you guys next time. So take care out there, everybody, and I'll see you at the Nerd Castle tomorrow.